What is up? Welcome to the Existential Stoic Podcast. Quick note, this is our 200th episode. Woo! Woo! Congratulations, Randy. I can't believe it. It's been it's been a pleasure the whole ride through. It really has. I can't believe we've done that many. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And what we have in store for you today is if you ever struggle talking to people or you ever struggle getting people to do what you want, or maybe to try and get them to see your side of the you know perspective or whatever you're in luck because they were going to talk about how to influence and persuade there's going to be a quick fix we're just going to share a few tips to help you you know learn how to hopefully do this better i'm going to start with my day i think we already introduced but before yeah i should say this is something that's always, kind of right this is something that's always yeah. interests me because there's so many books on like how to influence people how to persuade and it's like, why yeah. do people care so much? Like, why? Well, you know what's funny, though? I think that that's what always cracks me up is, like, the people that, like, buy all those books and focus on that, I think they probably are worse at it than the people that just don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the people that just don't care probably do best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's like, or they just expect it. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm starting. Mm-hmm. My first one, and as you remind me, I've gotten down this well a lot, but that's all right. Uh, I think you need to listen. I do think you need to listen because if you want to persuade people and you want to influence them, it's helpful to kind of know where they're coming from. So you can actually, if because I'm thinking of persuading and influence in the sense of manipulation too a little bit. It's always getting people to do what you want, right? So you have to kind of know where they're coming from to kind of be able to sort of steer things in the right direction so that you can get them to go in the direction you want. Yeah, absolutely. You need to listen because you need to be able to fulfill their needs as well. They're not going to fulfill yeah. yours if you're not going to be able to fulfill theirs. So listening is definitely a key <laughs> yeah. skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that's a good one. My first one is don't try. Like all these freaking tryhards who are trying so hard to manipulate people, to influence them, to persuade them. It's like, don't try. Just give it up. Like the, you know, it's like the people who try and manipulate others are the most easy to be manipulated. And it's just like... Yeah. <laughs> There's there's no reason to do it because if you wait until we get to my example number two, you'll see why you don't even need to try when it comes to influencing yeah. and persuading, which is kind of the that's the that's the hook to keep people in there until my next one. There you go. Nice. I like that. So it'll stay for number two. But no, I think you're right though. I think you know it's easy to like it's it's almost like laughable when you can see when somebody's trying so hard to be persuasive, to be influential, to get other people's attention. And it's like, dude, it's like you're where it's like you might as well be wearing a billboard that says I'm trying to validate myself and I'm trying to make others see my perspective. You know, it's like you're (laughs) trying to do it. Yeah, exactly. It comes off as needy. Whereas I think when people don't try, people are naturally kind of attracted to that because they're not putting their stress on you. It's not like they're they're not making a thing. It feels like you can help rather than be given a direction. You know what I mean? Or rather than be given a command to do something. And I think there's a way bigger, way big difference between those two. You know? Uh, oh, yeah. My next one is adopt the perspective of others to understand their motivations. I think this is important, especially like if you're in a, you know, if you're in a work situation and say you're managing or like, you know, if you're trying to, I mean, I know I do this in when I teach, you know, when I'm trying to leave a classroom. If you can understand the motivations of the individuals like that you're working with, you're way better positioned to give them what they want or to help them see that doing what you want them to do or thinking the way you think is going to help them get to where they want to go and fulfill those goals. And once you do that, it's like really easy because they'll just do it naturally. They'll want to do it because they want to get those same goals. You know? so. Yeah, that's a great one. Like putting yourself in other people's shoes. And it's probably one of the hardest skills out there because I still struggle with it on a regular basis. Oh, yeah. Like I think oh, yeah, I'm yeah. right about everything and everybody else is completely wrong. And it's like <laughs> I struggle yeah. with this regularly, but it's probably one of the most beneficial things you can do is to put yourself in someone else's shoes to see their perspective. Yeah, I'm very good at it when I'm not thinking about it. And then as soon as I think about it, I'm terrible at it. You know, like when I want to do it, I'm not very good at it. I'm good at it when I'm just like, thinking like you know just whatever it's funny oh, yeah. uh, um, so my second one for how to influence and persuade is be an example like stop trying to get people to do what you want and do it why don't you just do it perfectly first and then other people will follow you like that's that's really the only way to do it because otherwise you're just a nag and nobody wants that and but if you actually 
if you actually like embody it and become this thing that you're supposed to do, other people will want to follow you because you're in, they're inspired by you, not because you're a pain in the butt. Yeah, inspiration, dude, is like one of the best ways to persuade and, and influence others. It's to make them want to do it on their own. Not, you know, I think that's the problem. A lot of people see it as like, a lot of people see it more as manipulation, like in the sense of trickery, like, you know, like getting others like to do what you want them to do and like kind of being like the puppeteer. And it's like, that isn't going to, well, one, it's easy to spot. And two, even if you do get people, it's not going to last because they'll see through it. I think whereas if you can inspire them, it's like they'll do it on their own accord. They'll want to do it better, too. And they'll actually want to do it well. I think that's a really good one. Yeah, it's, it's important. Um, it goes nicely with my last one, too, I think, which is just, you know, being an example, showing you can actually do it. It goes really nicely with uh, just my last one is confidence, having confidence in yourself having confidence that you can do things and kind of being a confident just example in the world is also something that attracts people. But I think that goes really well. It's like, if you are an example, you'll be confident. You know, you know, you can do it. Like, you know, you're showing her you can do it. And yeah. Yeah. So confidence, that. whether it's real or fake, people are attracted to it. So my last one is care. And it all comes back to that saying, uh, people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Uh, so basically like uh, most yeah. people want to influence others. They want to the, shove their ideas down other people's throats they really don't care about the other people they just want their ideas to be disseminated blah blah blah, all this stuff whereas if instead you actually care about the other people like find out what's important to them find out what their goals and dreams are find out how this idea that you need to force down their throat could actually help them out and then start because once you do that they're more likely to care about you and if you think about in your life where there are people that you care about you're more likely to heed their requests. You're more likely to be influenced or persuaded by them as opposed to somebody you don't care about. Yeah, I really like that one because I think so often, and it, I think it's so often misunderstood when you talk about influence and persuasion because people think of like really just greed and getting what they want rather than actually thinking it through of like, how can you best lead? It's essentially leadership is how I think of it. Like, how can you best lead people? And I think you're right. Knowing what they care about, being able to identify what matters to them, being on their side, showing that you actually give a shit will be like really the way to get them not only to do what you want, but to do it really well. I think people forget that, too, because it's one thing to get people just to follow you or just to tacitly sort of agree with you. It's another thing to get people to actually want to participate and want to do it and want to sort of buy into whatever your thing is. Right. And I think that takes actually showing them that they matter to you and you value them as a person. It's a very good one. Yeah, it's a good one. And I like that. So that's it. How to influence and persuade from the Existential Zone Podcast. A little quick fix. We will be back later this week with another full-length episode. If you can, please share, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. This has been our 200th episode, or it's now in Season 3. So, And I will catch you later, Andy. Later, Danny.